Let's take a look at the solutions to the hydrogen atom, which have a radial part and an angular part, and see what we can learn about the probability of electrons being in particular places around the nucleus. So remember that psi star psi gives us the probability density um, for, for the electron in space. And because this is a three-dimensional r theta and phi wave function, the units of that probability density is the probability per unit volume. So the probability is the, um, in, in a given volume element, is psi star psi times that volume element. And remember that in spherical coordinates, that volume element is equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And the units of this volume element, because it's a volume, are meters cubed. So if I take the probability density and multiply by a small volume element, then I get a true dimensionless probability. So the probability can be expressed as the volume element, r squared dr sine theta d theta d phi times psi star psi where I've split the wave function into the radial part, r star r, and the angular part, y star y. So we can see that we can write this in terms of a radial probability and an angular probability. So let's take a look at the radial probability functions, um, and then in another video, we'll take a look at the angular probability. The two graphs pictured here are the radial wave function for different n and l, and I can change which n and l I'm looking at by changing um, the buttons down here. And then the radial probability, where I've taken r squared times r star r, or r squared. So when n is equal to one and l is equal to zero, I have a one s probability distribution. We can see that this 1s radial uh, wave function has no nodes. There is no place where the wave function crosses zero. And so the prob probability distribution, probability um, density, also has no nodes. Notice that the maximum of this distribution is approximately at one Bohr radii. And so the most probable position for the electron is approximately the distance away from the nucleus that was calculated by Bohr in his Bohr model for the atom. However, the average um, position of the electron is a little bit higher than one, bar, one Bohr radii and is closer to two Bohr radius. If I now look at the n equals two L equals zero, so a 2s probability distribution and wave function, I can see that the wave function has one place where it crosses from positive to negative, so one node, and we can see in our probability distribution that there is one node right here. Notice that the maximum probability is around six Bohr radii, and the average, again, is a little bit higher than the maximum and is about six Bohr radii. Moving to n equals two, we have the possibility of L being equal to one. And so when we have n equals two and L equals one, we have a two P probability distribution. So the wave function, again, has no nodes. There's no place where the wave function goes from positive to negative, so there are no nodes. And our probability distribution also has no nodes. Notice that the average distance from the nucleus is still at about six Bohr radii. So the quantum number n is going to tell us about the size of those orbitals. We've said in general chemistry that n tells us about the energy and the size of the orbitals. And any um, orbital with an n equals two regardless of the L quantum number, is going to have an average distance from the nucleus of about six Bohr radii. Looking now at N equals three and L equals zero, so a three S um, wave function and probability distribution, we now have two nodes in the wave function. 
and two nodes in the probability distribution. And notice that the average distance from the nucleus has moved out to somewhere around 12 to 13 Bohr radii. Our L equals um, 1 when n equals 3, so a 3p orbital now has only one node, one node in the probability dis distribution and one node in the wave function, but our average distance from the nucleus is still around 12 Bohr radii. And finally, if we look at a n equals 3, l equals 2, so a 3d wave function and probability distribution, we see that there are no nodes in the wave function, so there are no nodes in the probability distribution, and our average distance from the nucleus is, is around 10 Bohr radii. So if we generalize, we can see that the number of nodes in any given wave function or probability distribution is going to be equal to n minus 1 minus l. So notice that if um, l is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1, we have 0 nodes. n1, l0, no nodes. If n is equal to 2 and l is equal to 1, then 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. So n equals 2, l equals 1 has no nodes. When n equals 3 and l equals 2, we're back down to no nodes. So the number of nodes, radial nodes, in our wave functions, in our radial wave functions, can be determined by knowing what the n and the l quantum numbers are. So just as a reminder, you know how to find the nodes, the position in R where there is a node, because if you take um, R squared, R star R, and set it equal to zero, any R value that makes that zero is a node. Any R value that solves the wave function, the probability equal to zero, will be a node in that probability distribution. Remember that the extremes, um, because R, R ranges from zero to infinity, that at the extremes, zero and infinity are not nodes. It's only where the wave function crosses the x-axis. You also know how to find the maximum or the most likely probability because you can take the probability function, r squared, r star, r, and take the derivative and set that equal to zero and solve for the r max that solved this problem. So you can find that maximum probability, you can find the nodes, you know how to do that, and you also know how to find the average value of r. So we're gonna take the expectation value so R ranges from zero to infinity. We're going to take um, R squared R star um, times R hat times R dr. And um, that will give us the average value of R for any one of those wave functions or probability distributions.